And clearing those residential streets in Toledo is on the way. At noon today, the Small Vehicle Snow Plow Brigade was mobilized. Toledo 11 City Kraus reports. With most of the city's 625 miles of residential streets looking like this, impossible and impassable, officials in the city's streets, bridges, and harbors division started signing up small snow plow operators over the phone. About 60 called in for work. Their names were put on a list, and then they waited to be called. The private contractors will be paid $30 an hour, and they were assigned specific areas of the city to plow. There's over 120 routes, so it looks right now like we'll have each operator covering about three routes apiece. If we don't get any more volunteers. How many miles is that? Each route is approximately five miles. And you also have some contractors with large equipment, right? Uh, the larger private contractors are out on the main streets, like the Lexus Road and Detroit and so forth, uh, clearing drifts, yes. How many of those do you have? We have nine contractors, and the last I heard we had 14 pieces of equipment out. City officials are, of course, hoping that the work of their own employees and the efforts of the private contractors will get the streets cleared, the residential ones too, and get Toledo ones once again on the move. I'm Judy Krause, Toledo 11 News with the Minicam. Yesterday, rescue attempts by emergency vehicles were hampered somewhat due to a lack of available fuel. Although some stations have remained closed during the storm, others are open and are ready to service customers. And unlike yesterday when frozen pumps were a problem, station managers report today that the biggest problem is getting employees in to man those pumps. The manager of one service station says the gasoline situation has improved at his station. Well, we have, we should have enough to last throughout the day today. And then we should have a truckload coming tomorrow, so we should be able to handle the people that come in today. Are you having a lot of customers? Well, I didn't, but then I figured people needed to know, so I run a broadcast over the news radio to let them know that we're open, because some people said that they didn't know if we was open. And now business has picked up, people know we're here. The city of Toledo is issuing gas slips to those assisting in the rescue work, and they can get gas from the city free of charge. Again, some private stations are open and operating. However, motorists are still to remain off all streets, so the cleanup crews can clear as many of those roads as possible. According to city officials, those helping with cleanup and rescue efforts will be covered for liability by the city during the emergency. Okay, a little bit more detail yeah, now, Joe. Right. We can't emphasize enough, stay off the streets. Yeah. If you do go out, you're most likely to get stuck, and you're only going to cause yeah, everybody have some eight. problems. Yeah. Uh, things aren't any different anywhere in the three states surrounding us. Traveler's advisories are up for Ohio, for Indiana, for Michigan, in fact, for the six states that surround us. So nothing is moving much anywhere. Uh, blowing and drifting snow is still being reported through all three states. Gale warnings are up on the lake, and the winds are still quite strong. And this is what we have to deal with tonight. I saw many people walking today. If you're going to be out in the weather, bundle up and protect yourself. The wind's running 15 to 25 miles per hour with gusts of 30 to 35 miles an hour. That gives us a chill index with the winds averaging 20 miles an hour during uh, the last uh, few hours uh, of some 30 degrees below zero. But throw in the gusts, and that drops up, jumps up to 41 to 43 degrees below zero. It's brutally cold out there, so don't venture outside unless you are well protected from the cold. 25 degrees below zero can freeze any exposed flesh. So do be careful if you're going to be outside for any length of time at all. The storm itself is still up in Quebec, moving very slowly. Its, uh, its effect is still being felt all the way back through Mississippi, through Iowa, even down into the Carolinas with the strong winds yet still producing uh, drifting snow and uh, causing problems there. I want to show it to you on the satellite because it is a very large storm. The low center itself now covers some 2,000 miles. It is a very, very large, very strong storm. It is weakening now and beginning to pull off into the uh, northeast. But you can see the center is right there. The frontal system's running off the coast. But the circulation around this goes all the way back to the Dakotas, all the way down into the Carolinas. And it's still quite strong. The pressure gradient is beginning to weaken just a little bit, but it's very slow to pull out. Uh, so we still are stuck with the uh, blowing and drifting uh, problem. And it looks as if we will be into tomorrow as well. The winds will gradually die down to about the 10 to 20 mile an hour range for Sunday. So things are not going to get, they're gradually improving. We are seeing a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. But still, it's a very serious situation outdoors. Here's how the forecast looks. Traveler's advisories are in effect. We look for a continuation of the blowing and drifting snow. It will remain very cold tonight with a low temperature down to uh, zero degrees. 
Tomorrow, look for snow flurries to be very much with us. Uh, slowly diminishing winds, continued cold weather, the high only in the mid-teens, tomorrow night's low zero to five below zero. The extended outlook then is calling for fair weather but continued cold weather right through the period. We won't see any additional snow then until along about Wednesday, so we will get some relief. We could see an additional inch of snow tonight as uh, some of that white stuff begins fluttering around. Uh, we do have 16 inches of snow on the ground now. Since midnight, we measured 1.1 inches. We've had a total storm fall of a le little over 11 inches of snow. Thank you very much, Joe. We made a mistake when we mentioned looting in Seneca County. It's not in Tiffin. The problem has been in Fostoria. Also, for your information, Toledo Express Airport is not expected to reopen until tomorrow morning, Toledo Express. We'll take a look at the food situation in a moment. Residents in the Toledo area should not be concerned about food supplies. As we find out from newsman Randy Little, there's plenty, but you may have to make some adjustments. The supermarket business is brisk despite clogged roads. Many walked, some for a mile to get to the stores. Others were snowmobiled, while the lucky ones drove in four-wheelers. Shelves are full in connection with non-perishable items, such as canned goods and toilet paper. Fresh vegetables seem to be in good supply. But bread and milk supplies are sparse in most stores. The reason? People are buying large numbers of an item when they might not have to. The only problem that we're uh, having at this time is the fact that the people are hitting us so fast. And we have not had a chance to replenish, but we have made arrangements for everything to be back in these stores. And we are making arrangements now for the people to handle everything once it gets back in the stores. We've really had great cooperation from the customers and our own people. Uh, we've got some checkers that have uh, been working basically around the clock to help the customer get their groceries and get out. Perhaps the best indication that people are taking this crisis in stride is the fact that beer shelves in many stores are empty. Sales began briskly at 6 o'clock last evening and have been going strong ever since. Evidently, people are getting in the spirit of the blizzard of 78. I'm Randy Little, Toledo 11 News with the Minicam in Southland.